one thing I just wanted to talk about was uh, one way you can structure your training. Because as we know, there's different approaches to training and different methods. And it's good to know a few different ways. Uh, so you find what works best for you, but also sometimes if something isn't working good for you, you should still explore that way anyway because you might be getting something from it. Uh, I'm going to work with the idea of knife defence as an example. And the method of training we're looking at is, I'm just going to call it options. So what it's about is rather than, for example, I say to Chris, when someone does this, you do this, this, and then you do this. So there might be a perfectly good technique. Like if Chris comes in with a straight stab to here, please, because <coughs> it's got to be the right thing, then I do this, and I do this, and I do this. And then I can do, you know, so it's perfectly fine. Nothing wrong with it. But, of course, if he comes in with something else other than that straight stab, then I've got to know, <laughs> I've got to know that as well. So I can either add all these techniques to my repertoire, which takes quite a bit of time to learn them, to remember them, to learn how to do them, or we can look at using options. So, if someone's coming at us with the knife, what options do we have? I'm going to break it down into three. We've got the options of movement, we've got the options of controlling the knife hand, and we've got the option of striking the person. Now, in reality, you're probably going to use all these three together, or at least in some combination, most of the time. Uh, but within each of those options, there's also another set of options. That's so a bit like a menu on a computer. You click one thing, and then another little sub-menu opens, and, and off you go. The website of pain and suffering. <laughs> there we go. So, for example, movement could be, as soon as I see the knife, I run. Got lots of space, I can hide. Not a problem. Movement could be simply, I'm trying to move out of the way and maintain a range and a safe distance from it. It could also mean I close in, in terms of now I can work directly against the person. So if you like, those are my three options of movement. To disengage totally, to maintain a safe distance, or to move in, to engage in. So the second one is about controlling the knife hand. So simplest thing, for example, would be this. Now I've got some measure of control over the knife hand. What I can do from there is another set of options, but for now, that's it. So it doesn't have to be like this. It could be this way. It could be this. It could be something like this. But I'm getting some sort of control over the knife hand. The third way is I work directly against the person with strikes or kicks. Now, that can mean I'm going to smash this hand. Boom. I'm going to work directly against the arm. Or it could mean I'm going to move out of the way and then I'm going to work directly against the person. Okay. But as you see in doing either of those last two, I've got to have the movement anyway. So the movement is always the foundation. Because I can try and hit him in the face, but without movement, that's not a, you know, I'm on the losing side there. That's not a good exchange. Bare hand, yeah, I can take one there and I'll hit one there. But against the knife, no way. So I've got, to, I've got to have the movement in it. So that's why we always start with the movement. And what I want you to do, you take the running as way as, as red, but I want you to work, first of all, to maintain a distance. And you see, you keep moving the whole time. You don't move and stop. You just keep moving. So this is basic stuff for us anyway. But maintain the distance. And then the second one, I want you to... Oh, I want you to move in to the person. Okay? Simple as that. Let's go. What am I? One knife, two people. Don't matter. I've been running around. Still waiting? Oh, yeah. Still together, still miles away. <laughs> That's good. Let's look at now working uh, to control. Controlling the knife arm or controlling the person or a combination of two. 
So now we're not moving around so much, we haven't got the space on the side to move the wraps, so we've got to, we've got to kind of deal with it. So we can come out to sort of meet the knife. Now you don't want to extend out too far because if the guy's a bit kind of cagey, he comes in to stab me, just like this. I extend out here and he slashes with my hands instead. Okay, because it's easy just to do that with the knife. Simplest thing in the world to use. So, to some sense, I've got to wait for him to commit a little bit, then when he does, I can just grab. Now, it can be a simple thing as this, or you can be trying to trap it against the body, or you can try and get into some kind of uh, lock position. But again, the important thing with all this stuff is the way you learn, I think, the way people learn best, is not by me showing you ten different techniques, and then you'll remember maybe two of them, but for you to experience. Your body learns through experience. No one ever learns to ride a bike by looking at a diagram of a bike on a blackboard. Okay? You might be able to learn about the physics of riding the bike. You press here, the wheels go round, the balance, all the rest of it. But until you actually sit on the bike, you're not learning anything. Okay? So the same with this. And this is all real experience. Now, I'm not saying this is real in terms of it's trying to stick that in my liver with a lot of intention, because obviously that intention isn't there. But nonetheless, this is a real movement of some description, okay? So I'm, I'm learning to react against the real movement. And in some ways, you can break it down to two things, the movement of the person and the psychology of the person. If you can break the person's movement and break the person's psychology, or one or the other, then you're pretty much there. So what you're doing in real time with all this stuff is learning through experience. So I might try this. Shit, it doesn't yeah. work. How many times am I gonna, unless I'm a bit, you know, whatever, how many times am I gonna try that before I get a bit fed up, you know? So I think maybe, uh, oh, that works better instead. All right, so there's one experience that I've gained. Now from here, what are my options from here? Look, I can just continue this movement I know a little bit about the balance points, the triangle thing, so I'm not going to pull him down in the snow here because it's wet. But if I yank down on this and step back, boom, then I know it's more than likely going to the floor. So straight away, there's one simple thing I can do here, and I'll just pull him down. So I learned that through experience. So people who show you how to do everything all the time are cheating you of the experience of learning. Okay? They think they're teaching you, but they're not, because this isn't learning. This is learning. But if you're anything like me, stuff goes in here, especially at home, and it, it goes round here, and then it goes out that side. You're just doing round part. You just get straight through. I'm out of your, I'm out of your skills. That's great when you can get it, and it just goes through. That's, that's so, all the time you're learning from experience. I'm not saying it's the same intensity as a real situation, but we're learning for real. Your body's learning, right? So, just see, first of all, what options you can get. Can I grab the arm? Or, if my positioning is a bit better, can I come in and control the person? Okay, let's try. Uh, <coughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so the other one is we're just going to work directly against the person uh, just to hit him or kick him. Now I've got boots on so if I'm particularly articulate with the legs then I can maybe use the thing either to try and take the, the knife arm or to work probably more likely for me directly against his, his legs. The reason I say boots on makes a difference is if I take a cut here, then, you know, I'm kind of protecting a bit with the, the boot. If I'm wearing flip-flops, not such a good idea. It's not really flip-flop weather, so, you know. um, So I can be working against the legs, or I can be working against the, you know. The other thing is I can work directly against the arm with the fists, or, with the elbows. So again, if I'm a bit short on time and space, I might start working in here instead. And the aim now is just really to take this arm out of the way, take it out of the picture, 
Uh, if I hit him right, hopefully the knife will be dropped as well. But in any event, straight away, I'm positioning myself for a couple of good strikes. Or, I almost ignore the knife and I work directly against the person. When I say ignore the knife, I don't mean you just pretend it isn't there. You know, I still want to move out of the way. But, you're moving. So, obviously, when you're working, you put all that stuff together and, of course, you, you, you learn to work against different speed, different level of resistance, intensity and everything else. So the main point I'm going to get across uh, in this is if you ever get stuck in any particular position or part of the training, then just come back to thinking what are your options are. So here, I'm not really sure what to do. What are my options? Look, this hand is quite close to the head. I could come in here going for a take down. Uh, this hand can kind of sweep this down and I've got this here. This hand could do this and pull this this way. Maybe that's not such a good option, but nonetheless I still need to show. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. <laughs> so um, and again you learn by working against the person. If I'm trying to work a particular takedown in one way and it's not working, then I always have the option to change. And normally all it takes is a little change in angle or position or rotation and you can, you can then progress from there. So the important, important thing is you learn through your own experience and not through a set of prescribed movements that say you have to do this or you have to do that. Okay? So just, um, just play around now because the the other thing is um, like working through playing sometimes as well. So there's no fixed, like we, we can do like scenario training, I've got to do A and he's, he's got to do B. But this really is just about learning through experience of what my body's doing and what, what his body's doing as well. Uh, you can work fast, you can work slow, it doesn't really matter. Uh, obviously at some point you've got to learn to work against Ooh. the speed as well. <laughs> I've got gloves up and I'm going to try.